Hello and welcome to Linux Server Training 101. My name's Don Crawley. I'm from SoundTraining.net. We're the Seattle, Washington-based provider of learning resources for the IT community. This time I'm going to show you how to share files using NFS, the network file system. This video is based on Chapter 13 in my book, The Accidental Administrator, Linux Server Step-by-Step -Step Configuration Guide. The book is not required, but if you'd like to get a copy to follow along, it's available from Amazon and all the usual online resellers in both paperback and Kindle edition. Our software version that we're working with is CentOS version 6.5. This will work with either CentOS or Red Hat, and frankly, other older versions as well should work pretty well. For this exercise, you'll need the following. As I mentioned, CentOS or Red Hat Enterprise Linux 6.5 installed. Um, this certainly will work with older versions, but the, the version that I'm going to be working with of NFS is version 4, and there's some slight differences. You'll also need internet access in order to download the packages from the YUM repositories. Equipment software requirements. Two computers. Now they can be either virtual machines or physical machines. The demo is going to be done using a VM running inside VMware Workstation 10.0.2, but you could certainly use VirtualBox or Hyper-V or any other virtualization environment that you want, or as I mentioned, a couple of physical machines. Here's a summary of the steps that I'll show you. We'll install NFS using yum. Then we'll create a test directory and populate it with some files. We'll modify the NFS exports file, Etsy exports, and then we'll test using another computer running CentOS version 6.5. Your disclaimer, the video is provided solely as a courtesy to you, our viewer. There are no guarantees whatsoever. Do not attempt these procedures on a production server without first testing them for security and suitability in a laboratory environment. These procedures will alter your computer's existing configuration, and performing these procedures may open your computer to the public internet and subject your network to attack. So make sure you have current backups and take precautions, including data encryption and additional access controls to protect sensitive data, which is always good advice. So let's do the demo, and we're on Linux Server 01, which is our NFS server. Linux Server 02 is our NFS client, but we're on Linux Server 01. Let's first install NFS. So we'll do that with a command yum, minus y, install, NFS utils, and NFS utils lib. We put in the minus y, in case you're not familiar with that, just to answer yes to any of the prompts asking for confirmation. Did the download, now the installation, and now it's done, just like that. So now uh, we also need to create a test directory and populate it with some files just for the demonstration purposes. So we're going to use the command make dir, and I'm going to put this in the root of the file system. Put it anywhere you like. Uh, we'll call it public. Again, we could call it anything. And let's navigate to the that particular directory. So cd to public, and let's populate the public directory with some files. I'm going to use the touch command to do that. Touch is normally used for changing timestamps, but it's really handy if you just want to create some empty files to populate a directory for testing purposes. So uh, we'll create three files, NFS1, NFS2, and NFS3. Now that's done, and uh, now we need to modify a file called Etsy Exports. And this is the file that configures the shares, as we would call them in Windows, but in NFS they're called Exports. Uh, so let's open it up with the VI Text Editor. VI Etsy Exports. And as you can see, it's a blank file. Now, I've seen some uh, Linux systems where the file was populated with some text, some comments, and so on. Uh, but on this particular version of Linux, there's nothing in it. We simply need to populate it with the uh, directory that we want to export or share, which is public. And then we need to give it some parameters. So let's start with uh, the directory. So we'll touch I to insert, go into insert mode, then forward slash public. Now we need to specify the IP address or addresses with whom we're going to share it. Now we could get very specific and put in uh, a, an individual node or a subnet or even a network, but I'm going to get very general and I'm going to put in a star, which means anybody who can connect. And that might be what you'd want to do with a public share. Maybe not. It's a matter of preference. Depends on you know, what you want to do with the, the share. Now we need to configure it. So we're going to open parenthesis and I'm going to say RO for read only. That's obvious. You could also do RW for read-write. And then I'm going to use the sync parameter, S-Y-N-C, which simply says to NFS, before you make a share available, an export available, make certain that it's written to stable storage. And that's all we have to do. So I'll touch the escape key and then colon WQ to write quit. And now I've saved the Etsy exports file. And uh, as soon as we start NFS, we should be ready to go. 
Now that we have the Etsy exports file configured, we need to enable NFS. And there's a command that I'm going to use that is not required, but it's handy. Uh, it was required with older versions of NFS, but we're using NFS4. It does not require the RPC bind service. But if you want to use an old command called show mount to take a look at your NFS exports on your server, you have to have RPC bind enabled. And so I'm going to go ahead and do that now. And, and the order is important. You have to enable RPC bind before you do NFS. So let's do RPC bind. We'll use the command service. RPC bind. Let's check the status on it. Maybe it's already running. And it is, so we don't need to worry about that. But let's go ahead and start NFS while we're at it. So we'll do service, NFS start. And there it goes. Now it's running. Now we should be able to take a look at our shares, our exports. So let's do the command show mount, minus E. And that should give us our local shares. And there it is. One comment on this, if you get an error when you do the show mount minus E command with no IP address or host name, uh, the first thing to do is to check your host file under Etsy hosts and make certain that you've completed it. That's often something that we'll overlook in the early stages of configuring a server. But as you can see, this is saying that our export list includes the public directory and that it's shared with everybody. Now, uh, the next thing to do is to go to our client. So let's switch over to Linux Server 02. Now we're on Linux Server 02, and in order to use it and to test the configuration, we have to install NFS on it as well. So let's use the command yum, minus y, install, NFS. And I'm just going to put in a star here instead of typing out NFS utils and NFS utils lib. just makes it easier. It's another way of doing the same thing. And as you can see, it's checking the mirrors, looking in the repositories to see if it can find it. There it's downloading them. And doing the installation. And got a couple of extra things with it, which maybe we didn't need, but uh, certainly that's another option for us. So now we can test our configuration. Let me show you what I was talking about. If I use the show mount command here, it's not going to work. Show mount minus E 192.168.0.1. That's how we would check the, the share. And we're going to get an error. But that doesn't mean that NFS isn't working. Let's uh, try mounting uh, the share. So let's do mount, and then the IP address of the NFS server. Or if we had names resolution working, we could also put in the host name, and then the name of the share or the export. And then let's uh, mount it to the MNT directory locally. No message back. That's a good sign, as usual. And so let's check the um, MNT directory and see if there's anything there. So we'll do ls slash MNT. And look at that, there are three files. So it's really pretty simple. Um, it, older versions of NFS required that you uh, enable RPC bind, but NFS4 doesn't require it. So as you can see, it's pretty simple. Uh, there are some other things that you can do with it, but this will get you up and running with a basic NFS file server. If you'd like other resources, I blog at www.accidentaladministrator.com and often include how-to guides that correspond to the videos on that page. There's also our website at www.soundtraining.net. You can follow me on Facebook, Twitter, and Google+. If you'd like more videos, they're available at our video channel on YouTube at www.soundtraining.net slash videos. And if you'd like the companion book, I'd love for you to have a copy of it. It's available in both Kindle and paperback edition on soundtraining.net's bookstore or from Amazon and all the usual online resellers. Well, I hope it's been helpful for soundtraining.net. I'm Don Crawley. I'll see you next time.